All righty, folks, we are continuing the new investor series. We have three amazing investors with us today. We have Sherry, Ghana, and the little one, Natalia. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing great, Mike. Excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. Well, do me a favor, Sherry. I believe you reached out to me first. Why don't you give us a quick introduction to your guys' story? What are you at? What do you do? Uh, where are you on this investing journey? We'll go from there. Sure, Mike. Uh, myself, Sherry Peter. Um, we live in uh, Florida, and that's my wife, uh, Dragana. And we have our daughter, Natalia. I'm traveling for work. That's why I'm in North Carolina, and they're in Florida. Uh, but uh, we started our journey around three years back with real estate. Um, I work for a big financial company based out of Boston. Mm -hmm. um, so I work as a vice president managing some of the, the cloud mo modernization programs. So that's sort of my background. Very, Gana, very... do you want to go next? Sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am a real estate agent. I am full time. Uh, I'm quite new started this year, September, but this is going to be my full time career. Very, very cool. And where have you guys decided to invest? So when we started off early, Mike, um, we didn't really have a strategy. So we were theoretically looking at a lot of, you know, watching videos as anybody else. And um, so we did buy some properties out of state. At that time, okay. we were living in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have those properties anymore. We liquidated them because okay. it just didn't work out for us. Then we had to find a good market for us. And that happened to be Cape Coral, Florida. So since then, we have been concentrating all our assets in that area. So we, we believe in the area of Cape Coral. And that's where all of our properties are now. Very, very cool. Well, I think it's interesting. Um, let's, If you don't mind, let's go back to the to the beginning where you went out of state, maybe a little quick. Uh, you tried it for a while, didn't work, you liquidated. Because I think there might be some lessons learned. Lots of investors kind of go out of state quickly because where they live is doesn't make sense, right? Um, so why don't we talk about some of the lessons, the painful lessons, probably, because you, you ended up liquidating. But let's just talk about that part of the journey, because I'm sure you learned a lot. What, where do you want to say about that part of the journey? Yeah, maybe we can start with uh, um, how we really got into the mindset of real estate investing, right? So, okay, so yep. I, I used to work for mutual funds for almost seven, eight years. So I always understood the idea of like diversifying your, you know, personal savings or income. Uh, primarily, I was investing in stocks and mutual funds. And I started looking at, okay, this is not diversified enough. Um, I wanted to um, also concentrate on real estate because I saw, you know, a lot of videos and, um, you know, podcasts and listening to bigger pockets and things like that. I understood that a lot of the people are making the real money in real estate. So that's when I started looking at uh, real estate and then we sat down together, me and Ghana. Um, then um, we looked at like how we can invest uh, in real estate. So right. we had to obviously find the right market. So a lot of the the initial um, things what we did was concentrating more on the cash flow side, right? Sure. So we looked at okay properties which we could buy for 150,000, 200,000, 250,000. Um, we didn't want to take that risk by investing a big chunk of money. So that's the market which we looked at. Um, and that happened to be Cleveland, Ohio. So we okay. bought a triplex there initially. Um, and on paper theory, um, again, the cash flow looked great because you have three units, it's diversified as a portfolio itself as a, on its own. And then the cash flow was looking great. I think the cash flow was almost like two thousand dollars, and the mortgage was only we bought it for one hundred and forty-five thousand. So and put twenty-five percent down. So it was the mortgage was less than hundred thousand. Um. So you know mortgage taxes insurance all including it was around nine hundred dollars nine hundred dollars nine fifty dollars something around yeah. that. So it looked like thousand dollar cash flow on paper, but once we started really. Um, acquired the property and understood like the, the tenants and they're not paying the rents. Everything went smooth for three months, four months. But mm -hmm. after that, 
Um, one of the tenants did not pay the rent, so we had to go through the eviction process. And then we had to, you know, replace the tenant. So that took another three months. Overall, it was not a great journey. Uh, it was so painful. And I was on the phone. Ghana was on the phone. We had to get the work done for the property. Personally, yeah. I drove there. Oh, um, wow. Because when I bought the property, I did not see the property um, okay. when we bought it. Um, but once the tenant moved out, we had to get some work done. So... I went there and personally did a lot of the work and we had oh, to wow. hire some plumbing. Yeah, so it was not a good journey uh, overall. The experience was very painful. Sure. Uh, so we didn't want to keep that property anymore because yeah. uh, the quality of tenant was just not there. Yeah. Ghana, what, so what we do you the property for? Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. You sold it for what? We sold the property for exactly what we bought. Um, so we bought it for 145 we sold it for 145 already put a lot of money um yeah. renovating the property so it was a loss net loss yeah um, but we we took the loss but the learning was really huge yeah very cool well Ghana, what do you remember from that ex experience uh going through that first journey with the triplex in, in cleveland that was very difficult, definitely. And uh, this is not just uh, one tenant. Sherry gave example of one tenant. This was, we had uh, multiple tenants not paying <laughs> rent and trying to uh. figure out what we're going to do. But this was kind of like a project for us, first time uh, investment property. Mm -hmm. So it was a project for us to understand the market, to understand what what we are getting out of this. And um it doesn't stop there, right? Uh, Sherry uh, decided to go more deeper in a journey. We were not discouraged by this. So yeah. that I have to give this to Sherry. That he, if it wasn't for Sherry, I wouldn't be able to continue this because I, I just can't. And yeah. uh, he was great support and I knew what he's doing and I knew it's the right decision to just follow whatever he says. Uh, that's great. It's funny. I don't know if you know my story, but we had a very similar experience with our first purchase and I was ready to get, I was ready to give up. And, and my wife, my better half, Olivia was like, no, no, you know, let's learn the lesson. Let's try one more time. And, uh, the rest, the rest was very positive. So, uh, uh, kudos to you, Sherry, for, for seeing past the mistakes and the pain, which I'm sure was, was pretty painful. Um, so, okay. So you liquidate that property. Um, I guess a word of advice to new investors is, is we I, actually, let me ask this question, Sherry, and, and maybe Ghana, you as well. If you're looking at out of state, do you recommend going to visit the location? Like, should you have gone to see the triplex in the location before you closed? Would, would that have helped you think? Uh, we'll go to you first, Sherry. A hundred percent, Mike, because if we went and saw the property and we drove around to see the community around it, we, I don't think we would have bought that. You would property. have passed the Excel, we the, the beautiful Excel spreadsheet would have. Yeah gone away yeah i got you how about you ghana do you exactly. think you need to go see your properties absolutely absolutely sherry uh, after that sherry was inquiring about other properties in virginia he drew there maybe four times so far oh, wow. and realized that that's not the place and uh, after that he even flew to somewhere midwest i can't remember was it minnesota was it where was it sherry um, but I know that it, it was just um, definitely a must. You need to uh, research the area. You need to live for a bit there. Um, yeah. if not everybody has the luxury to go and live there, but at least try to spend a few days to, to understand the, the place, the market yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Natalia, are you going away? She's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was going to ask her a question, but that's okay. Uh, so, you now are focused on Cape Coral. What is it about Cape Coral, Coral that has you guys excited? Maybe we'll go to Ghana first this time. Uh, definitely this uh, credits to Sherry because he was sitting on a laptop and researching days, days and hours and hours. <laughs> Sometimes I would remind him, hey, it's time to sleep. What are you doing? <laughs> you got to go to bed. 
go to bed and he is like no no i need to get on top of this i need to stay on top of this otherwise nothing will be done and finally he came up with the uh, southwest florida and then we were researching like which part of southwest florida and definitely cape coral seemed like a inviting place for even maybe living and uh potentially investing so we um we went i don't know when was it sherry 2021 we um we decided to, yeah we decided to stay for a month we rented airbnb and stayed for a month we spent a bit money there but it was worth it after that we realized we want to stay two more extra months oh, to, wow. to, to just yeah to to decide like whether this is really it or it's a big decision right sure yeah. so i think those two and a half months spent in southwest florida really paid off so far it's, it's funny you bring that up because one of the things that Olivia and I did recently is we were looking for a second home location and we did the same thing. We, we rented a home in Airbnb. I want to say it was for four or five weeks, just to, just to go out every day and see if we, we kind of clicked with it. So I think that, I think making that investment in that time was really, really cool. Sherry, what got you excited about Cape Coral? So when I started initially, um researching about southwest florida there are so many places around you know cape coral there is fort myers there is bonita springs there is naples there is so many places it's hard to understand um, just googling and doing some research where exactly is the is the right fit for us so again like ghana mentioned we went there and we we actually stayed in fort myers we didn't live in um, cape coral the airbnb was in fort myers beach um, but all we were doing is we were driving around every day I work. I have to do my work. And after that, um, we'll start, you know, driving. Yeah. So every day we used to go for long drives and understand the community. What's the difference between Cape Coral and Fort Myers? What's the difference between Bonita Springs and Naples? So all mm -hmm. these areas we drove around and then we understood like Cape Coral, what we noticed very unique about Cape Coral is the, the amount of development which is going on in Cape Coral it's just like it's like astronomical like the properties are being developed by so many developers and the development is just huge right mm -hmm. other areas like Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, Naples that's already developed and the properties have already appreciated right but this is very unique aspect would be found in Cape Coral um, then I think geographically, Cape Coral was developed with a lot of like 400 miles of canal system. Hmm. Um, so it's almost like the world's number one um, in terms of like the canal system. So the idea is like, uh, you know, people can bring the boat and park in the in the back of their house if they want to, right? Like, uh, right. so that's really the concept how how Cape Coral uh, was created back in, I think, 1960s, early 1950s. So, yeah, so I know nothing about Florida investing and, and even less about Cape Coral. But one thing I hear a lot, guys, is insurance has gone up crazy uh, in, in Florida. I, a, is that true? You know, what what are you what are you doing around, you know, insurance? especially after the hurricane, Ian, uh, the insurance did go up and we had to switch uh, some of the insurance companies. So because we have little more than you know five or six properties so at this point we have like uh, seven properties so because mm -hmm. of that we work with the insurance broker and they are able right. to get us a good rate otherwise yeah if you have just one or two properties and you don't have insurance broker then it's hard to get a good rate yeah i know definitely an insurance broker in fact i have a, i do a monday show called the hub and one of the things we added to the to the to the to the building was an insurance broker and they're very helpful right they take what you have they farm it out to more than one uh broker so yeah i, I love that um uh, ghana what's been your experience in cape in cape pearl investing you've got seven units now completely different than cleveland yes thank god <laughs> thank god they're different uh yes no uh, the cape coral just felt like home not just an investment but the home for us and i told sherry i don't know about your job current job if you have to move somewhere i'm staying here <laughs> yeah get and on a plane I buddy <laughs> yeah no we, we love it here and um the good thing about cape coral is that cape coral has uh, areas that are not in a flood zone so it doesn't require insurance so we also aim for such properties so that we save some money there 
Well, that's good. That's good advice. Very cool. So um, what are some things you've learned, Sherry, being in Cape Coral for a while and in, in adding and in, in build, really building a nice portfolio of single family units? What are, what are some, some ahas or gotchas that you would want to share with the world? Yeah, we started with uh, single family homes and then we bought a duplex also. Okay. Um, right. Then we also invested in some lots. Um, so we, I wanted to like, even within the real estate investment portfolio, again, I wanted to diversify it. So I have like a mix of like single family house. We have one duplex and then we have some lots. So we have five lots within Cape Coral. Oh, wow. um, so some are commercial lots, some are like residential lots, some are like multifamily lot. Um, and, and we are also doing a fourplex construction. Uh, oh, wow. Again, it's a new venture for, for us. Um, so yeah, we we almost shovel ready, Mike, at this point. So excited! Wow, very cool. Well, tell me about that. I've never done. I mean, I I attempted to build a duplex in one of my lots, and the city wanted a hundred grand before they would even look at it. I'm like, no thanks. Uh, what's it been like to do it yeah. in Florida? Maybe it's a lot easier in Florida. Yeah, I did because we are doing this first time. It took us a lot of doing again research, talk to different people. So we got a civil engineer, we got an architect, and we pretty much sit with the architect and formulated what exactly we wanted. We initially, we started off as a six-plex or six-unit building, um, but because of the site setback, we had to just reduce the, the footprint of the building. So we ended up with a four-plex at this point. Okay. But uh, the county approvals and things, um, it takes time. I yeah. usually it takes like three to four months. Um, and I never anticipated that. And just working with uh, the architect and civil engineer, we need to have like, it's not just the building, the, the all the landscaping plan, where you're going to yeah. run the plumbing, how yep. you're going to connect to the city water sewer, how you, your irrigation system will be set up. There is so Lots many things to worry about. <laughs> Lots yeah. of stuff. Well, tell me about the lots. I mean, was the idea of buying lots just to hold and flip them? Was the idea of buying lots to eventually build on all of them? What's uh, what's the plan for lots? Because lots by themselves, they don't produce cash flow. That's correct. Um, the, initially, when we bought the, the four is being built on one of the lots, which you initially bought, this is like sure. back in 2021. So we bought it, I believe it's a half acre lot, multifamily RMF 15 uh, okay. zoned. Um, and we bought it for, I think, uh, $80,000. Right now it's valued at $125,000. So okay. over the past two years, it has appreciated a lot. So that's what we're seeing in the Cape Coral market. The lots are going much higher price. Okay. I mean, they're not making land anymore, especially geographically, like yeah. it's very unique. It's close to the ocean. And you go and this particular lot, it has a lake behind it. So it's a lake Ooh. view. It's a really beautiful lot. Um, so we also like don't just buy lots just for just because we're getting a good price. We look at all the the houses around it, we look at the locality mm -hmm. because as I say, the real estate is very much different street to street. So again, like we're living in Cape Coral for past one, one and a half years, we pretty much understood the entire Cape Coral because we have been driving around and seeing yeah. what are the differences between, you know, the different parts of Cape Coral. We actually have like four um, zones, the Southwest, Northwest and Northeast. And yeah. yeah it's very and they are very different. Yeah. Well, Ghana, you're a brand new real estate agent. So yes, uh, talk sir. about that experience, taking your experience from being an investor, putting some roots down to now help because there's a lot of people still moving to Florida. Uh, what's it like yes. being a new agent in, in Florida? It, this is the, I think it's still too early, but I think this is the best uh, decision that, that I have taken so far besides marrying Sherry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's so cute. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, because when we started this journey, we didn't think, of this, we, we always knew we want more, we want more properties. But then after deciding to build a fourplex, we were like, wait, hey, one of one of us should get a um, real estate license because it just yeah. makes sense to get the money, stay in the family. Yeah. So uh, that was the in initial plan. So I went um, and pursue my career in a uh, real estate um, journey, yeah. Yeah. So I think what you're referring to there is because you're a married couple, one of you claiming real estate professional, which obviously a full-time real estate agent would qualify for. 
your uh, income stack statement can look very different than two W-2 employees. That's really what you're highlighting. Is that right, Ghana? Yes. Yeah, folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, do a Google search for real estate professional and see what happens when your spouse can be called a real estate professional because some good things can happen from there. Um, why don't we look ahead? So obviously you're building a fourplex almost so like ready. The... Oh, go ahead, Sherry. No, I was just about to add uh, the point that because we have been acquiring, you know, our target is to buy five properties every year. So oh, wow. because we have this uh, this target, you know, again, like the commission which we are giving to an other agent, because we are doing all the research, we know the area, we're finding the property, and then we're just using an agent just for a few signatures, right? So we were just discussing, like, why don't we, one of us, get a license? Yeah. So both of us ended up getting a license. She's making a career out of it um, because I have I have a job, so. Yeah, yeah. That's you have this pesky point. day job, yeah. No, I think it's a genius advice. I mean, if the situation uh, warrants it, I, I I highly recommend it. Either you want one of you, right, in the relationship, becoming a, a full time agent and and thus the real estate professional. Again, if you don't know what it is, Google it, check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's look ahead, guys. Sherry, Ghana, um, what's the near future? So, Sherry, you already said you're almost shovel ready on a fourplex. You've told me that you want to buy five properties a year, which is outstanding. Um, you're a new agent, Ghana, so that's going to be kind of exciting going forward. Um, why don't you go first, Ghana? What do, you, what do you see coming over the next 12 to 24 months? Well, what I see is five more properties for <laughs> next year. She's on board, <laughs> Sherry. Yes, and... Um, uh, I just had a meeting with my uh, brokerage company and like the plans for each one of us and how many um, transactions we, we plan to close. So there is that plan to have at least 20 nice. transactions the, uh, the coming year. And um, awesome. one good thing about um, being at the same place where we have the, the properties is that we do our own uh, management. Yep. So yep. we do not have to hire anybody. Not, there is expense, obviously, but it's just our own thing that we are doing okay. here. Sure. So, um, so far, all the properties are managed by Sherry and I. I would take more credit, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> You're there. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, long term, short term. Yeah. So there's some. Uh, uh, Sherry's a numbers guy, so whenever numbers come in play, I'm like, Sherry, go ahead, figure <laughs> out this, and let me know. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, well, Sherry, I've got to ask, man, five properties a year plus starting a new. So let me ask you this. So building a four unit, does that count as one or five new properties or five different purchases? That, I'm counting it as a one building and one property. I don't count doors. Okay. Um, so, so that's why I said like we have this many properties. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like it. I, yeah, I do the same thing. I count properties, not doors. Uh, I totally get that. Uh, what do you see over the next 12 to Because we are not months? so much uh, at least worried about the, the cash flow aspect, Mike. Obviously, it has to have a positive cash flow, but you know, we, we, we believe that all these properties will appreciate tremendously over the past few years. That's why we invested. And if you look at our portfolio, most of the properties are like single family houses and they are brand new homes, right? Yeah. So because we are local to Cape Cod, we're able to like connect with a lot of builders and they pretty much send us all the deals before um, they even hit the market. So that's how we are able to acquire them, you know, $20,000, $30,000 or less than the, the market price at that point, whenever we acquired it. So that's a definitely an advantage we feel like what we have over other investors. Because starting early, like um, in 2021 and 2022, we were looking at MLS, we were looking at Zillow, LoopNet. Uh, that's where we are going for most of, you know, to finding the properties. Right now in Cape Coral, we don't need to do that. We have a lot of builder connections and we have um, also, like because Ghana is a real estate agent, she's she's in touch with other agents. So most of the time, we get, get like bombarded with emails. Oh, this is a property which will be coming to market in next week, or and yeah. we just look at it. If it makes sense, we make an offer. If it doesn't make sense, we pass on. So yeah, that's, huge that's advantage to being local. That's a beautiful strategy. Uh, well, Sherry, we'll go to you first. 
what do you see coming over the next couple of years? And do you have a social media following? If somebody wanted to follow what you guys are doing in Cape Coral, does does something exist? Yeah, literally, I created uh, an Instagram. I think uh, three weeks before yesterday, <laughs> I was just updating. <laughs> so it's called Rentals to Wealth. So all our LLCs are, are called uh, Rentals to Wealth. It's okay. just uh, the address and Rentals to Wealth, uh, the number of the street number, and then Rentals to Wealth. That's how our structure is. So our name of the the Instagram channel is Rentals to Wealth. So Randall's and two is like numeric two and then wealth. Yep. That's that's on Instagram. That's awesome. Uh, and and, uh, Ghana, and for you're future, a... I think. Oh. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. For future, uh, I think we want to acquire more properties and we want to partner with more folks. So that's one of our goals. Um, we have never done anything on the social media side so far. And I think this is this is one of the very first attempt to be nice. out there to tell our story um, because we want to scale this, Mike. Um, yeah. And to scale, you have to be out there. Um, and the system and the models, what we figured out and put in place in Cape Coral at this point, we want to let others leverage that aspect. So we are also doing joint venturing. We are doing partnerships. So yeah, the last two properties we did joint venture. Nice. Um, so that was great. Very, so hopefully more joint ventures and partnerships. Yeah, I think you know if it, if my history is any you know hint about what your future is. If you if you stay on top of rentals to wealth on Instagram, they see what you're doing. They see the project. They see the build. Uh, you know it, it it'll it'll take some time to build the momentum. Uh, but it is it is there in your future. Just just keep at it. Don't uh, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen in three weeks. Uh, so that's, that's good. Uh, Ghana, you're a real estate agent. If somebody's looking to buy or sell in Cape Coral, Florida, how would they reach out to you? Do they, they go to Instagram? How do you want them to reach out and say, Hey, yes, I want to buy do, or I sell? Have, yes, I do have my Instagram. It's Donna, uh, dot Popovic, which is, uh, G A N A dot P O P O V I C H Popovic. So they can find me there. It's my personal slash work. Instagram, yeah. I'm quite new in real estate, so I have to build my portfolio yeah. uh, there. But yes, I, I am, like Sherry said, um, I am planning to um, invest myself more into uh, social media because I see that uh, being a number one for what we are doing, uh, definitely. And um, not just as a real estate agent, just selling and, and buying houses, but also kind of make a videos and educate people on the area so that they can yeah. find they can find useful information there as well. Yeah, one of the things I would highly recommend agents do and I got this from Sean Cannell, the CEO of Think Media, is if you're an agent in a market like Cape Coral, you should go out and record like, hey, this is a great bakery that I like. This is a great, you know, this is the supermarket I go to. This is whatever. Uh because you know, that's how people are learning markets today and, and learning trust and, and all of that. So I think you guys have a great plan, a great activity. Congrats on what you're building. Um, guys, happy holidays. Natalia, Merry Christmas, if she's still listening. Uh, guys, thank you for doing this. It was awesome. Thank you, Mike, for having us. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely, guys. Take care. Thanks, Thanks again. Mm-hmm.